The unique situation with you gals is you all came from this little town, Jefferson, Minnesota, all in the same class, eight girls in the class, and there were four of you that got this quartet together and went up to the cities and were very, very good. We have an octet going, and the four girls graduated from high school, so it left we four. And we thought, what can we do, you know, with singing again? And somehow barbershop harmony mm -hmm. struck our... And then I think we were asked to sing at a PTA meeting, is that correct? Yes. And then we fooled around with lots of music and we found the barbershop song. We found out about the barbershoppers putting on a show in New Ulm, Minneapolis Barbershop Chorus. And somehow we found out about that, and we made up our minds we were going to go down there. And so we went to the show, and people asked us to sing at the after goal. And that's yeah. when we met Kathy and Kathy, Claire Lino. Right. She came up to us, and she said, you girls have to get out of those pants mm -hmm. and sing like a girl's quartet. And from then on, we were hooked. Called them Ma and Pa. When we went up to the cities, we were they were like our parents, really. Mm -hmm. Stayed with them, and she cooked for us, and sold for us. They had a restaurant now. Yes. Kathy's Kitchen. And they never had any kids. They were both involved in barbershop. Mm -hmm. Very much so. She and Sweet Adelines, mm -hmm. and he yeah. and yeah. Minneapolis Barbershop. And didn't she even write to our parents to say that she... We were graduating from high school, and then we went up there and sang how they'd watch over us and take care of us. They took us to a lot of the jobs. Lots of driving yeah. around. I've got somebody to love me night and day, sweetest girl I've ever seen. I'd walk a million... For some reason or other, when we were singing in Jeffers, we gave ourselves the name of Four Teens. I, we were four teens, and when we got to singing in Minneapolis, we were approached by someone that we couldn't use that name because uh, men's quartet had that name. In fact, they went on to be international champions. Uh, as I remember, we got a letter from Steinmetz, didn't we? Yes. We had yeah. a change. <laughs> so we had to change. I have this memory that it was one of the four teens. It's like, no, you can't use our name here. How about this? And I just assumed it was, you know, sort of tongue-in-cheek, like, yeah. I think it was a good name. Well, apparently it was uh, memorable, anyway. Yeah. Mary, please don't be angry, because I was only teasing you. I wouldn't even let you think of even. Don't you know I love you? the Star and Tribune sales trip. My boss called all of their bosses and asked if they could go on a Star and Trib sales uh, conference thing. And so we flew to upper Midwest cities. I don't even remember where we to anymore. And they wrote special lyrics for us that were kind of along the business line. Wasn't to it to the song, You've Got to Be a Football Hero? Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. That's and that, that was popped And dressed as secretaries. And we were advertising the paper. Do you remember uh, woodshedding about four in the morning on a Minneapolis street around a old stove? We came back from some show and we didn't go inside right away for some reason. We stood around outside and did some woodshedding. We could stay up late in those days. Yeah. Yes. We were sailing we were sailing along on moonlight bay. Back in those days, it was almost a must that all your costumes match. I remember going to the shows that they measured that the bottom skirt was the same 17 or 14 inches from the floor, and heaven help you if one was higher than the other. I can remember difficulty of finding four pair of shoes that looked alike in the same size, and they had to be low heel for me and higher heel for the rest of you. And then Eunice left hers one time when we were in Wisconsin, so we had to hurry up and buy, we had to hurry up and try to find four pair of shoes that matched that. But then we had those black taffeta eyelash things. 
red eyelashes. I on. like those. I like dress. those. Yeah. I'll yeah. bet those were our favorite mm -hmm. outfits. Oh, yeah. I think so. We blackened. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Our faces. The yeah. internal we stuffed our bodies. Wouldn't do that Horror. anymore. <laughs> uh, is that we actually worked with, with burnt cork. God, that was so embarrassing. We sang at a, <laughs> at a basketball game or something one time in, in blackface. That was awful. At this point, it would just be inappropriate. But at the time, it really was not. We well, didn't know any better. I, I, we were the first girls quartet ever to be invited to sing at the men's barbershop quartet at Northrop Auditorium. And we were aware that we had caused a lot of concern between the men barbershoppers themselves because Judge Schletten and Claire Lino had pushed for this and Doc Brown yeah. had pushed for this and pushed it through. And there was a lot of dissension about allowing a girls quartet in the men's barbershop show. Ring around Rosie O'Reilly, Lizzie Maloney's a National Sweet Adeline. We took the train to Milwaukee. Like a kid who sees a wind from school. was singing the, um, the allotted amount of time. Jack was looking over the score sheet and then yeah. to see the, what did we lose, 70 po points? 75 75. Points. 75. And 7. the judge 7. wrote on the piece of paper, ouch, O-U-C-H, in big letters. You would have been in fifth place. You'd have beat, you beat the tonettes in every category. You lost because of that time frame. Because of the time we rushed. But at least we started the show, and that was kind of an honor, too. As a mic test. I think I can honestly say we did it because we loved it.